Greetings all, Bill Vensel from Chords of Orion. Uh, if you've listened to some of my music, you've probably noticed that many of the songs have a drone or a pad going on in the background of the song. It's, uh, it's typically there throughout the entire song. I really like the use of drones slash pads because it provides a glue um, in an ambient type of song that pulls everything together. It also, if you, uh, if you use a drone at the beginning of the song, it also sets a mood for the rest of the tune. So how do we create these drones? What I'd like to do on today's video is show you how I create them using the Strymon Timeline and the Ditto Looper X2. You may have different equipment, so um, uh, you'll just need to apply the concepts to your particular equipment. All right, so let's just talk a little bit more about what I'm using today. Uh, in addition to the Strymon uh, Timeline and the Ditto Looper, I'm also using the Avid 11 rack for guitar amp modeling. Pretty straightforward. For the guitar, I'm using a Carvin Holdsworth model. I'm also using a Morley volume pedal, the little alligator. Love it, had it for a long time, works great. So let's go ahead and hop right into the demo. Let's see how we create uh, these drones. The first thing we need to do uh, is create a loop. The, the advantage of having a loop is that you've got some signal to feed into your delays, into your reverbs, over and over and over again throughout the life of the drone. So it, it can provide um, audio just to keep the whole thing moving along. So what I'm going to do is create just a very simple loop. It'll be a little funky here because I'm going to use my finger to to uh, turn the looper on and off or to turn it on to record and play. But I think you'll get the idea. I'm going to, uh, let me just play it real quick here. I'm just going to play octaves. Something like that. We'll see what happens when I actually play it and record it. Um, you'll note that I'm using the volume pedal just to remove the attack of the, uh, of the pick. So here we go. Let's see how this works. Um, what I'm going to do now is use the Ditto's capability, the X2's capability, to reverse the loop. I really like that. I use that a lot. I'm also going to use the second effect that uh, the Ditto X2 supports, and that is to play back at half speed. So I'm going to play this loop in reverse at half speed. All right, so well, let me give that a try here. Great. So I've got my loop. Now we're going to start working with the timeline. But I've got the timeline set to the ICE model. I like the ICE model a lot because it has the capability of alternating intervals in the signal as it delays back. So let me show you the parameters for this particular setting that I'm going to use. The first parameter is the interval of playback. And I've got that set to uh, plus one octave. So in other words, we're going uh, to iterate between the original signal that's going into the delay and an octave above. There's also the time slice. You can select short, medium, or long. I've selected long. 
And then the timeline has a smear parameter, which basically mushes the signal, if you will. And I've got that set all the way up. All right, great. And I've got it set all the way down to 24 beats per minute. So it's a pretty long delay. So let me go ahead and play back the loop and let's hear what that sounds like briefly. Okay, so as that fades out, you can kind of hear what's going on there. It's, inter it's uh, alternating between the lower octave and the higher octave. The next thing I'd like to do is apply a little filter to roll off just a little bit of the low end, a little high end, kind of make it a little more trashy sound or a little more lo-fi sounding. And there's also a grit knob on the Strymon timeline to add some distortion. So let's hear what that sounds like here. I really like that. Sounds a little more synthesizer-like to my ear. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is uh, uh, add a little bit of stereo width. We're going to use the modulation area. I'm going to increase the speed just a smidge, and I'm going to ramp the width. I'm sorry, the depth all the way up. Let's hear that. All right, so you can hear uh, you can hear a stereo thing going now. So we've got some width. All right, now I'm going to add from the Avid 11 rack a second delay. That's off camera, so you couldn't see me press the button. But really, you could simply add in another delay into your signal chain, and all this does it's it's just a simple 600, 800 millisecond delay, nothing special. All it does is uh, make the entire delay signal a little more complex. So I just I've engaged that. You'll hear that in a moment. And the repeats are where the magic is going to happen with the uh, with the drone. So let me go ahead and play back the loop, and I'm going to slowly increase the repeats, and you'll hear that self-regeneration begins to occur, so we get an, kind of an infinite loop going. Uh, depending on how it sounds, you may see me actually turn the loop off. Sometimes once you've fed enough audio into the looping delays and the regeneration occurs, you don't really need to continue to feed it additional signal, and it will actually sound better if you cut out the loop. But we'll see how it goes. So give me a couple minutes here, just listen, and let's see what happens. All right, delay, uh, the repeats are about halfway up, starting to sound pretty good. Let's move it up to about three quarters. And you can hear there's a lot of regeneration going on now. If I move it all the way up, we may have a runaway situation here. So let's go ahead and take the original loop out and see what happens.
Oh yeah, that's cool. So you can hear the low end kind of dropping out of the regeneration. Everything's smearing and kind of degenerating in a really nice musical way. Well, there you have it. Interesting way to make a drone, a pad, and uh, I, I really like it a lot. It doesn't take a whole ton of equipment. Get a good loop going, get a good delay, get a good amp sound. You, you don't need a whole lot to get a pretty interesting type of tone. Thanks a lot for listening. If you're interested in hearing more tips, uh, ambient guitar tips, and other related videos, uh, please subscribe to my channel. And I will see you on the next video. Let me go ahead and get this thing going again here.